but I would like to, to start by uh, telling you what uh, EconPol actually uh, is. Uh, ma many of you know it, but uh, I guess now not everyone, so let me say a few words about what it is and what we've done uh, so far. So the idea is that EconPol Europe will be what we call a new voice for economic research uh, in Europe. Uh, so EconPol Europe is a, is a research network. Uh, it is a network of six research institutes in three universities from seven uh, European countries. Um, and uh, what do we do? Um, the network carries out uh, research projects uh, and uh, disseminates uh, uh, this research and encourages debate. Uh, and this, is, uh, this research obviously has a focus on the European Union uh, and the Eurozone. This project was initiated and financed uh, and is financed by the German Federal Ministry of Finance. Uh, so there was a tender, and in March 2017, so uh, you know, just half a year ago, uh, IFO was commissioned to set up the network. A and I will show you the network partners in a minute, uh, but I'd like to, stay, uh, to say right away, we are open for cooperation with other uh, research institutions, uh, in addition to those that are present in the network. So here you see the founding members. Uh, of, of the network, as I said, um, uh, nine institutions from uh, seven countries. I have to be careful here not to get the numbers wrong. Uh, so uh, we have uh, the next to the IFO Institute, we have CEPS here from Brussels, CP from France, uh, IHS from Austria, uh, the University, the, the Toulouse School of Economics, um, uh, Zaid Business School from the UK. Yes, uh, they are on board in this network, uh, Trento uh, from Italy, VAT from Finland, and uh, ZEV uh, from Germany. There will be uh, an office, or is an office, uh, in Brussels. Uh, but uh, as you see, you know, basically it's a network of European uh, research uh, institutions. Uh, so what are the objectives? Um, the kind of prime objective is to intensify border crossing cooperation in academic research on economic and fiscal policy issues. Um, uh, you know, encourage cooperation across these countries, but with a focus, obviously, of meeting uh, in Brussels and uh, you know engaging uh, with policymakers. So um, I guess one very important aspect of this network, um, uh, also in my personal understanding, is to build a bridge really between the national debates the national economic policy debates and the Brussels debate, because this is something I believe which is really missing. I mean, there's a lot of good work being done here in Brussels by research institutions, but what we don't have so far is um, uh, an institution trying to bridge the, the, the national debates and the European debate. I'm often struck, I have to say, when I come from uh, you know, Berlin to Brussels and see the difference in the way uh, uh, things are discussed, and then when, when I go to Rome uh, and meet my Italian friends there, again, you know, they look at me and say uh, uh, yet uh, different things, so there are uh, considerable differences in the national debates, and the, uh, the idea is, you know, to bring, bring this together here in, in this project uh, and make progress uh, uh, on these uh, different uh, issues. Uh, you know, we, as I said, the focus is on the development of European Economic and Monetary Union. Uh, and um, uh, another focus we would like to emphasize is uh, a focus on structural long-term issues, sustainability of public finance, structural policies. Uh, we are interested in best practices of countries, so what can one country learn uh, uh, f from another, um, things like that. I will, I will come back to that. So what do we actually do? What are the activities of, of the network? Uh, as I said, we uh, have a number of joint research projects. Some of these projects will be presented here at the um, uh, at the conference, uh, being work in progress. Uh, we have different types of publications, policy reports. Uh, the idea here is, you know, it's it's 25 pages, um, kind of summarizing the research out there and uh, trying to come up with you know policy implications based on this research. Uh, we have discussion papers. These are academic papers. I will show you examples in a, in, in a minute. Uh, uh, academic papers with uh, relevance to these European question, uh, questions we're interested here, in here. And then we have policy briefs. These are like uh, you know three to five page um, papers, shorter papers, 
uh, and opinion pieces are written by individual members of the network, you know, their op opinion on uh, whatever current issue um, that might be. Then, um, so we have these publications, uh, we have conferences and workshops like this one, we uh, will organize lunch meetings. Of course, we will do media work in Brussels and uh, EU-wide, and in all of these activities, the idea is not to produce more purely academic research, you know, things you can publish uh, um, in, in academic journals, but really to bring together researchers, policy makers, business representatives, NGOs, journalists, um, and so on, and to foster the debate about European economic and fiscal policy issues, uh, always, you know, um, trying to bring in the economic research, but we are not, you know, in all our conferences and workshops, we are not trying to replicate purely academic work. It's not the idea. The idea is to um, have some kind of policy um, uh, debate, really. I guess, as you're all aware, a lot of academic work is very compartmentalized, so a lot of academic papers focus on very special issues, and I think one of the big challenges we are facing is, uh, you know, how do we bring these very uh, uh, th these very diverse insights and papers and models, how do we bring them together uh, to get an overall picture? This is one thing, and the other thing, in my view, is uh, we have a lot of empirical work, but I think we have a lack of debate about, uh, you know, what is reliable empirical work, what is credible uh, empirical work, and what is less credible empirical work. You know, you can, you can come up to, nowadays, you can, can come up with an empirical study uh, about, you know, proving um, uh, more or less anything, but uh, all depends, you know, the credibility of a study really depends on the methods used. Uh, so bring more, into the, more of that uh, uh, into the debate. You know, I personally think we would even m need more replication studies because, you know, there's a lot of work out there which is, uh, you know, m would may maybe generate different results just because data has been revised and so on. So, you know, that kind of thing. Um, is, is what we would like to see here. So in the network we have defined four research areas, sustainable growth and best practice. So as I said, you know, the idea to look at successful countries in the EU or outside the EU and ask, you know, what do, do they do things from which other countries can learn. Um, uh, reform of EU policies, the EU budget, capital markets, the regulation of the financial sector, and then governance and macroeconomic policy in the European Monetary Union. So these are sort of four re broad research areas, and we have defined projects within uh, these areas. Uh, what you see here is our website, which has been up for some time. Maybe you've seen it, so what you find here uh, if you're interested is you can find all our events, uh, our activities, and you can download the publications uh, here um, uh, on this network. E Econpol Europe is on Twitter, uh, so you can receive Twitter messages from, uh, from uh, the network. A few examples of publications that have come out this year. This is our first um, uh, Econpol working paper, so this is the uh, sort of academic paper series. And uh, our first uh, paper, this is very nice, is by uh, Jean Tirol and uh, Emmanuel uh, Fari. So um, the, um, the title, um, I like that one in particular because it sounds uh, exciting, Deadly Embrace. You know, it sounds more like a thriller or something. Uh, in fact, it's about European Monetary Union. Uh, and banking and so on, but you know I think it's it's very relevant uh, and uh, interesting paper. Here is uh, the uh, an example for a policy report. So the first policy report we produced in this network, and uh, we, as you see here, um, we brought together authors from um, almost all uh, network partners from France, uh, Germany, Italy. And we, we wrote a paper about uh, the future of Eurozone fiscal governance. And what we do in this paper is, you know, raise the policy questions and discuss uh, different views and, uh, you know, bring in the different views also. Uh, you know, interestingly, as you all know, um, uh, you know, it, it's not irrelevant. Uh, the, the nationality of the authors is not r irrelevant for their views. You know, normally you would say in academia there should be a zero correlation between views about policy issues uh, and um, 
uh, and and the, and the passport of, of the people talking there. But you know, it's not the, uh, the EU is not like that, not even academia in the EU. And that's why it's so useful to have this very diverse group of people coming together and trying to agree on something. Uh, and um, I, I was very happy when we started. I thought, you know, we'll never get there. But you know, we got there. We wrote something together, and uh, you know, I think that's. That is an achievement. Um, here is an example of a policy brief. Uh, you know, these kind of shorter papers, in this case by uh, Roberto Tamburini from Trento. Uh, this is about macroeconomic uh, imbalances and their importance uh, for uh, European uh, monetary union. And then we have these uh, opinions, you know, individual authors write what they think about uh, whatever issue. Uh, here is um, a comment by Daniel Gross uh, on, um, you know, criticizing um, the uh, European Commission for its views uh, about the euro area or, or its analysis. Uh, I've written a piece on tax competition and uh, the UK. Oh, there's a recent paper on Catalonia. You know, these are just examples of the issues we deal with and we you know of course we tr try try to be you know as far as we can up to date and um, you know deal with the uh, contemporary issues so uh, what is our you know what is our plan where are we going uh, here are some uh, events and things that are upcoming um, so there will be uh, a doctor workshop uh, you know part of the activities will be that we try to bring together young researchers phd students with uh, not just senior academics but also with policymakers you know to confront them early with um, uh, you know policy relevant work so there will be a policy workshop in cooperation in that case uh, with um, CES IFO and there's more work uh, forthcoming uh, one study on asymmetric shocks uh, in the eurozone which we'll uh, present tomorrow uh, uh, then there is um, in the pipeline we have one piece on on the economic and fiscal cost of Brexit we will organize what we call fireside chats, for instance, with members of the European Parliament or with uh, other people, so different uh, formats we have here to interact uh, with uh, policymakers, uh, lunch debates, uh, and uh, similar things. So that's, you know, this is uh, EconPol. Uh, as I said, I'm really excited that we have been able to bring together this group of institutions from different countries. Uh, and, uh, you know, wh where is this going? Uh, this is an open process, uh, so we, you know, jointly decide about uh, our research plan. Uh, and the entire, you know, this network is open, uh, so we are talking to other institutions from Europe. You've seen that, you know, there are <coughs> important countries in the EU, uh, and I guess each country is important, that are not represented in the network, so we are open to extending the network and bringing in um, uh, institutions uh, so the idea is that this will be a network of academic institutions so we are looking for partners uh, from academia but partners uh, who are interested in policy work you know in, in bringing uh, you know their work into the policy debate uh, so let me say a few words about today's conference um, uh, this is uh, the the founding conference of the network and we decided to uh, focus uh, on the uh, on this uh, in this conference to focus uh, on the eurozone so overall we have 250 participants over two days so they're not all here yet but uh, they're hopefully coming from all areas you know academia policymakers civil society uh, um, a lot of uh, media uh, is is present um, as you know uh, in just a few minutes we'll have a panel discussion on the future of uh, EMU, chaired by Daniel Gross, uh, and then a keynote address by uh, François Viroy, uh, the governance of uh, the Bank of France. And uh, tomorrow, I'd, I'd also like to draw your attention to tomorrow's program, which is interesting, I think. We have a number of sessions. In part of these sessions, we will present ongoing research projects from the network on immigration policy, uh, on the EU budget, um, uh, economic convergence, macroeconomic imbalances, uh, on corporate tax. Uh, there's a lot of work on corporate tax in the network. Uh, I've, I've seen yesterday that the uh, Commission is getting interested in Paradise Papers. Uh, you know, it's nothing new. This is about uh, tax avoidance and what we can do about it. So we will do work uh, in the network. Uh, on these uh, things um, as well. So uh, I'm for looking forward very much to uh, you know the next uh, two days. 
Uh, and I would like, uh, I would now like to invite uh, Daniel to start our first panel. Uh, so welcome again, and thank you very much. <laughs>